So, welcome to a sort of mage tutorial. Um, I just want to talk a bit about the current best mage armor set, which is namely the Elemental Lord's Regalia, uh, or ELR for short, and that's what I'm going to refer to it as throughout this video. Um, we'll start with a little history lesson. Um, so, once upon a time, we didn't have belts braces or trinkets prior to that update the number one mage set was arcanist and since that update it has been elr and whilst neither armor set themselves have received either a buff or a nerf there has been a global change to alacrity which along with certain new items uh, swung the balance of power decisively in the way of the ELR mage. So prior to those changes, a mage running ELR could only clear trial 125. Um, that was only cleared by one player, I'm not going to say who. Um, Arcanist was way ahead on trial, I think it was 139, it was 138 or 139, somewhere in that region. Once the belts and braces were introduced, along with the trinkets and the nerf to alacrity. If you did a massive overinvestment into ability rate, Arcanist could probably push on an extra one trial, so to the 139, 140 region. ELR on the other hand, thanks to things like the Frostfire Sash and the Power of Ma uh, Bracer of Mastery, saw a massive jump in the ability of, of pumping out damage uh, and its performance has increased from troll 125 to troll 162 in the last season which was cleared by three players so that's a huge leap and way ahead of arcanist now um, the elr set pairs perfectly with the grand magister's command set um, I've spoken about that in a previous video, so feel free to go look that up to see what I mean with those. So what is it that uh, ELR set provides that makes it so useful right now? I think first up we'll look at the various set bonuses that apply. Um, so when we have two pieces um, of ELR equipped, we see that our damage of Immolate, Fireball, Meteor and Frost Nova is increased by 500%. Uh, quick thing to note, Fireball Meteor doesn't mean the Fireball skill itself, even though you're shooting lots of little Meteor-like Fireballs. And when you upgrade this skill to level 10, it has a 25% chance to summon a Meteor, and that Meteor does 100% weapon damage. Um, if we, so we've got a 25% chance of a little Meteor doing 100% weapon damage which can be increased by 500%. Uh, Frost Nova, as we see, that only does 100% weapon damage. Immolate, 120%. These are all at level 10. Um, in the grand scheme of things, certainly on higher trials, higher level trials, these are extremely weak skills, but they're extremely useful in triggering all of our powerful effects and processes, which are covered in the GMC Shatter and Thermal Shock video. But there's no need to despair because when we move into our four piece bonus, things start to get very interesting indeed. Um, so here, casting a frost or fire spell grants up to five charges of elemental fury, each charge increasing your damage by 8% and reducing your damage received by 8% uh, for a maximum of 12 charges. So these charges, when they're applied, they are on a timer and start to fade away and, and go away and you have to keep casting your uh, frost and fire skills to uh, keep topping those up and get a maximum of 12. Um, there's quite a bit to explain in that description there. So casting a frost spell, so these are frost nova, blizzard or frost beam, or a fire spell, 
which will be immolate or death from above. So any of those five skills will grant us up to five charges of elemental fury. Uh, you see elemental fury charges on your uh, buff bar and we'll take a look at that very shortly and see that in action in a trial. Uh, each charge increasing our damage by 8% um, and this is a straight 8% and then the next one's another 8% and then another 8% so with 12 charges we have 12 times 8 which is a 96% damage increase um, but what about damage reduction do we see a 96% reduction in damage so are we only taking four percent of our overall damage or not well let's go and take a quick look in a trial and see what happens Okay, so we can see on our buffer Elemental Fury, we've built up 12 charges there. Uh, and as you can see, our damage has increased 96%, which is exactly what we expected, 12 times 8. Um, but our damage reduction, it shows as 63.2%. And you might be thinking, well, that's not 12 times 8. Surely it should be 96%, but it isn't. It's the damage is reduced from 100% to 92% and then 88% off from that and then another 8% off from that and another 8% off from that. Um, so maths alert incoming and I shall now show you the formula that is used to calculate this damage reduction figure. So we start with uh, the total amount of damage that we can currently take, which uh, as a percentage, 100%, so we represent that as 1 here. From 1, we need to, sub we need to subtract the um, amount that our elemental fury reduces our damage by, so we know it's 8%. We then need uh, an exponent for the number of charges. So in the case of one charge, um, this would be one minus 0.08 to the power of one, which is 0.92 or a 92% amount of damage that we're taking um, but because we are representing this as a damage reduction we're not reducing our damage by 92% we're only taking 92% uh, of the total damage that we could take so we need to subtract this value from 1 which is 100% And finally, we want to present this as a percentage on screen, so we need to multiply the total number by 100. And if we put that into practice, we should find that to, with 12 charges, Following that formula, we come out at 63.2%, which is the amount that we saw in game displayed. So, sorry for the maths, but if you were interested, then that's how it's done. So, welcome back from the maths lesson. Um, and finally, our six piece bonus. 
Uh, frost and fire spells have their base cooldown reduced by 6 seconds and damage increased by 75%. So again, this is the same frost and fire spells that were in the 4 piece bonus. So we're looking at uh, frost nova, blizzard, frost beam, death from above and immolate. Um, so this is a, another hugely important bonus to get, particularly this 6 second cooldown reduction. Uh, the more that we can cast our skills, the more that we're triggering certain effects off our weapon sets, so our thermal shocks and our shatters, which are doing a large amount of damage along the way. So our four-piece bonus is huge in terms of our survivability, and it helps pump out our damage, and our six-piece bonus really does help us pump out more damage too. And... In addition to the set bonuses, three of the um, ELR armor pieces come with their own additional uh, effects. So the shoulder piece or the regalia pads, if we scroll down here, the amount of death from above charges produced is increased by 100%. Um, if we look at the death from above skill, it's really useful in experience farming. Um, a hero bombards enemies with fiery missiles. Basic attacks have a 10% chance to add a fiery charge, and special attacks have a 100% chance to add one to three charges. So, our basic attacks here will be our auto attacks, uh, Frostbolt and Arc Lightning in this case, and our special attacks, Immolate and Frost Nova. Um, and as we're casting Immolate and Frost Nova constantly as we run around, we're constantly rebuilding our charges. And because we've got the shoulders equipped, we get 100% more charges when we uh, cast those skills. Um, you can see when you're building charges, it's left, left over from a troll run that we did for the math section. Um, they appear as little fireballs spinning around your head and they seem to persist when you finish the trial. So they're not little birds spinning around my head because I've cracked it on a brick wall or something. It's just a leftover charge of death from above charges. Um, in addition to that, the chest piece, this is a really good um, one. So the duration of Northern Wind is increased by two seconds. Uh, if you want to see why Northern Wind is so important, then I recommend you go watch my video on GMC, Thermal Shock and Shatter. Uh, There's a full explanation in that video as to what Northern Wind is, why it's so important, how you trigger it. And the last one we're going to look at are the gloves, so the Regalia Arm Guards. Uh, this, not so Brilliant, it's a bit near in my opinion. So the potency of frost slows is increased by 20%. Um, oh yeah, that's that's fine. It's something nice to have, but it's not that important. Um, so if you're looking at building your uh, first ELR armor set, I think for the very first piece that you're looking to build, uh, assuming you're getting the Grand Magistar's Command Weapons set, so the Igneous, Pillar of Flame and Glacius Tempestus weapons, I would recommend that your first regalia piece should be the regalia robe for that Northern Wind duration increase. Um, after that, you're pretty much free to go for what you like. If you're looking at building a Death From Above experience farmer, um, and you're new to ELR, you probably want to jump in and get the regalia pads as well uh, if you don't have the full set. So those two to get your two set bonus and then either helm, gloves, pants or boots to build up your four and then six piece bonuses. Um, so if you made it this far and you found it useful, then thank you very much. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them down below in the comments section and I tend to log in once a day at least to see if there's any comments there. 
so if you put anything in it will get a reply so feel free to comment if you've got any questions and on that note thank you very much and happy gaming